Hi everyone, um, my name's Jodie, um, I'm a teacher from Hud well, Huddersfield in West Yorkshire. Um, I'm actually new to teaching classical civilization this year, um, but I've been a history teacher uh, for about 15 years um, and I teach solely A-levels. Um, so what I thought I would share with you today in terms of what I've been working on with my teaching over the last couple of years is that I've been working on something that's very in vogue at the moment, uh, which is retrieval practice. So it's quite possible that what I'm going to share with you today is not going to be anything that's new to you. Um, and I don't at any point claim that any of these are, are my ideas, but these are just some activities that I've been using that I think are really useful. Um, and yeah, so um, what I would suggest is that if you're not sort of up to speed with retrieval practice as an idea is, is get hold of Kate Jones's book on retrieval practice. It's probably, you know, it's quite a simple read. It's not a long book. It's not overly technical. Um, and it sort of talks you through the, the main ideas and the science behind it. Um, now, when I kind of came across this book, I thought, you know, what what is retrieval practice? But actually, I realised that retrieval practice is something that actually I've always done. Um, I've just haven't called it retrieval practice and maybe haven't signposted it as explicitly to students um, when now I, I kind of make a real effort to sort of explain, explain it a little bit to students um, and then really try to embed it and, and use the terminology. Um, and where I use it most is, is kind of in those starter activities um, at the start of the lesson. Um, I teach in a, in a big six form college. We've got nearly 3000 students quite often students can be a little bit late getting to lessons just just because of the time it's taking them to, to get through the campus so it's quite nice to have some sort of activity on the board that they can be getting on with as they arrive um, and that's sort of mainly how I use um, retrieval um, and what I, I kind of have been really impressed by is sort of you know I've always done tests with the students you know quick fact tests that kind of thing but actually, you know, the science behind retrieval is that that the reason why those sort of short fact tests are, are good is that it helps them to learn. It helps them to embed memory in it's embed things in the memory rather than, you know, to collect scores on a weekly basis. Um, so, yeah. Um, and I think it is helping to make the students kind of more aware of where they are, where the gaps in their knowledge are. They say they, they really enjoy all the retrieval stuff. It, it comes back sort of um, quite positively on, on kind of the learner voice stuff. So I just thought I'd take you through a couple of activities that I like to use. Um, I have kind of a, a, a PowerPoint of kind of blank um, pro forma that, that I can just adapt and, and fill in. So once kind of the basic document is created, it's quite fast. So um this is the the sort of sheet that i might use maybe um sorry this is a, a, a medieval history topic uh, not a classics topic but obviously you could see it can easily be adapted um so i might use this maybe in the a2 year to recap something from the a1 year um you know where we're, we're picking up on a topic that uh, we've we've sort of done before but maybe a long time ago and and for those of you not familiar with medieval crusading history Antioch is, is a topic that does really confuse students so it's quite good at the start of maybe revisiting this in the second year to just you know do a little test of what they know um reminding them of, of key sort of people that they need to know about treaties they need to know about etc and it also kicks up any misconceptions questions kind of before you start but at least gives them maybe a little bit more focus than just what can you remember about Antioch um, so that's kind of a nice little sheet that I use. Um, another one um, is sort of a little grid um, that I call them what can you remember grid so you can see I've used this in teaching the Iliad um, so I, what I have is, is a section for describe, a section for details, uh, a section for which book, a section for defines. Um, and I'll just sort of say to the students, right, you've got, you know, 10 minutes to do as many of these as possible. Um, you know, so the idea isn't necessarily that they get everything finished, but it's focusing the mind, um, you know, and then obviously if there's anything they get stuck on, can't do, we, we can then we can then go over it. 
Um, so that's quite a nice one. And I use that quite a lot. I use that with the historians. With the historians, I have, um, instead of which book, I think I have date um, instead. Um, that's the big change that I have there. Um, and then another sheet that I might use quite regularly are little pictures, um, which is quite interesting seeing what they what they come up with. Um, so I use this one particularly to get them to think about similes in the Iliad. Um, uh, so, for example, the snake, uh, obviously Paris, um, stepping back like, you know, a man who's who's spotted a snake. But it's interesting sometimes just to kind of see what they come up with. Um, and like I say, all of these things, I, I feel, just help to um, focus on the start of lessons. Now, the one thing that I've used um, that I use a lot and the students really, really enjoy, um, it's something that I picked up in Kate Jones's Retrieval Practice book. Um, but it's a... Uh, an Excel sort of file uh, called the Retrieval Roulette, which was created by Adam Boxer. So I've put his uh, blog website on there and you can go on, you can read all about the Retrieval Roulette um, and you can also download a copy of it. But I just thought I would show you how it works um, because as I said, I use this quite a lot um, as a really nice little quick starter. So it's a bit of a faff to create because it takes quite a lot of time. So what you have here is you have all of your pre-entered questions. So this is my Iliad retrieval roulette. Um, and you can see I've got, I've only got 156 questions. For some of my history ones, I have nearer to 300 questions and they're all organized in book order. Um, and so for example, say we were in a week where we were learning, we were up to book 22. So I should feel confident that the students should be able to know anything from book 19 and earlier. Um, so what I would think is right, they should be able to do up to question 138. So you go to do now, you type 138 into the box and it will randomly select five questions that the students can be getting on with. Now, hopefully as teachers, we know what the answers are. Uh, but if we don't and we need to check, if you go to do not answers, it brings the answers up as well. Um, and so every time you do that, it will randomly select. So if we just do it again, one, three, eight, again, it will come up with a different set of random questions. Um, so what I've found uh, with this is that the students um, quite often will ask me for a copy of it and they use it and then they can input it into things like Quizlet and make flashcards out of it, um, etc. But it's a really great little starter if you've not had time to prepare something or you've, you, something's not working and, and you need kind of a bit of a filler or um, etc. But the students say it, it's one of the most useful things. So it is a bit labour intensive um, to set up, but once it's done, you can just save it. So like I say, nothing particularly groundbreaking there. Um, but I do sort of feel that retrieval is something that's worth focusing on and, um, yeah, spending any time on. I'm quite happy to send anyone any um, sort of pro formers, um, sort of easy lift um, blank sheets if anybody would like them. Uh, thanks a lot.